Some other clinical trials to watch that we're very excited about uh, re uh, results reporting out soon in the lung cancer community include the Papillon study. This is a phase three trial that's pending peer-reviewed publication. This is the confirmation trial for the uh, registration for amivantamab. So amivantamab was approved by the FDA on accelerated approval. This is the phase three confirmatory trial for full approval. And this looked at uh, newly diagnosed patients. So recall amivantamab was approved only in the second line setting. And this is gonna take newly diagnosed advanced or metastatic non-small cell lung cancer patients with our exon 20 insertion mutations. It's going to compare amivantamab plus our standard platinum doublet chemotherapy with our platinum doublet chemotherapy alone to determine whether amivantamab improves progression-free and overall survival in this patient population to see if, is it worthwhile to move amivantamab up into the first line setting. We're also excited about the Mariposa study. This is a phase three trial evaluating the efficacy of amivantamab plus lazertinib, comparing it to first line ocimertinib. And this is in patients with our classic EGFR mutation. So as I mentioned, that early signal in the 20 patient cohort showing pretty impressive results. We're comparing this to our now gold standard of ocimertinib to see which regimen is superior. And then finally, um, in an effort to maybe make the administration of amivantamab a bit more patient friendly, as we know these intravenous infusions can take a long time since we have to start the infusion slowly, we have to up titrate the rate of the infusion only as the patient is tolerating it. We you know, are spending a lot of chair time for these patients. So the Paloma study is looking at a subcutaneous uh, administration of amivantamab to see if we can uh, shorten the duration of treatment for patients, which would be less than seven minutes, um, and remove that, again, need for the split dosing for them to come back subsequent days, and hopefully reducing the risk of these infusion reactions that can happen in upwards of 60% of patients that get IV amivantamab. Heather, what would the results of these studies add to our knowledge base and how might the results change clinical practice? Thanks, Stephanie. Um, actually, I'm really excited about the subcutaneous option for patients. Those infusion reactions can be pretty scary for the patient um, and for the nurses and the physicians. Um, and so being able to avoid that is great. And also having to come in every two weeks is a big ask for patients. And so that's gonna be really exciting. I think we're doing a lot of exploration on how do we improve first line? Um, Osimertinib for the classical mutations has been the standard for quite a while. We keep looking at, can we add chemotherapy? Can we add things like bevacizumab? And here we're asking, you know, this is a chemotherapy plus with this novel agent. And so I, I think that's gonna be exciting if it reads out. You know, the questions are always around for patients and their preferences around starting off with infusional therapy versus still having the oral option. And so a lot, lots to still explore there, but I, I think it's, it's really exciting. And then the lazertinib plus amivantamab combinations have been really promising. Um, as you'd mentioned, it's not just in the EGFRX on 20 where amivantamab alone is approved, but also for the classical mutations. And so I think the, the early data we've seen is great and, and having that phase three confirmation will be particularly, I think, practice changing. But it's again, bringing more into first line and when we've had some positive trials in the past, patients always haven't always wanted to do that. So I think that you know, time will tell, but it's really exciting to have so many new options available.